Good evening. I am Edoardo Barbieri. I am professor of history of the book in the Catholic University in Milan. Thank you for the invitation. I am honored because it is the third time that I speak for the National Library of Israel. I am very happy to give this speech this evening with my old student and now colleague, Dr. Luca Rivali. We propose to you a small way in the first years of the printing in Venice. Now we have a PowerPoint. I uh, ask to Luca to, okay, this is the title of this, this speech. We can go to the second slide, please. Together with Luca Rivali and other colleagues of the universities of Bologna, Udine, and the LUMSA in Rome, I am working on a project about the beginning of printing in Northern Italy. It's a very interesting topic that involves many different competences and requires an interdisciplinary approach. It is entitled The Dawn of Italian Publishing, Technology, Text and Books in Central and Northern Italy in the 15th and 16th century. The topic of this communication, the dawn of modern book, Era Rattle, a printer in Venice, 1476-1486, is related to the above mentioned project. We will focus this evening on the experience of the German printer Rattle, who worked for 10 years in Venice. It was a strategic moment for the development of printing. When the first experiments had been conducted, the press arrived from Germany to Venice in 1468, and very important German capitalists were involved in the international trade of printed books. For example, Peter Ugelheimer from Frankfurt, about, about 1444-88, uh, a true bibliophile who loved illuminated books. Errol Rattled is an uncommon printer who introduced very significant inventions and found new ways to realize printed books. The first important study about him was printed in 1894 by Gilbert Redgrave, the first volume of the Illustrated Monography series of the London Bibliographical Society. The author, a famous architect and book collector, in the following years became president of the Bibliographical Society and in 1926 published with the great scholar of printed Alfred Poller the first edition of a short title catalog of a book printed in England, the standard bibliography of oldest English books. The most recent study about Rattle is his profile for the Italian Biographical Dictionary printed in 2010 and written by Luca Rivali. Okay. Herard Rattold was born in Augsburg around 1447. His father was a carpenter, certainly active in Augsburg from 1439 to 1462, as shown in the tax records. For the year 1462, the probable date of his death, his son Hans and Herard are also mentioned. The latter left his hometown in 1466, the year in which he does not appear in the tax register. 
In 1462, Rattle, then 15, was in Venice where he spent a few years. We do not know anything about his education, but he had something to do with the world of books. Like other contemporaries, he was a copyist before entering the world of printing. Indeed, in 1468, he signs as a copyist a manuscript preserved today in the library of the Seminary of Padua, manuscript 100, 116. The subscri subscription reads, Etardus Ratol Augustensis Probatissimus Libraria Artis Exactor Summa Confecit Diligentia Anno Christi Millesimo Quadringentesimo Quinquagesimo Sextuagesimo Octavo. Calendas Decembris Venetis. Etardus is probably a read error for Erardus, Erard was, was uh, his name. So Rattod was in Venice before the arrival of Johannes de Spira, who brought the art of printing to Venice and before starting a career as a printer there. The Padua manuscript also demonstrates the early employment of Rattod in the world of books, it is not by chance that he defines himself probatissimus libraria artis exactor. He returned to Augsburg by 1471 and left again in 1474. For the following two years, his traces are lost. Probably in this period, he was trained in the art of typography, perhaps in contact with the workshop founded in Nuremberg in 1472 by the mathematician and astronomer Jan Müller, alias Regiomontanus, Regiomontano, to publish the famous calendars and other similar works. <coughs> the activity of this workshop ceased in 1475, the years the year in which Reggio Montano was invited to Rome by Sixtus IV to work on the general reform of the calendar. But even in Augsburg, Rattod may have had early contacts with the printing press. In fact, since 1468, Günther Zeiner had a printing house in this city. In a few years, also those of Jan Schlüsser and Jan Bemler were established, as well as the one open at the monastery of Saint Saints Ulrich and Afra. Zeiner introduced in Germany the use of Roman type, the so-called Litera Antiqua, as early as 1472, in his edition of two works by Isidorus. There is nothing, however, in common between the type of Zeiner and that of Rattled, and we fail to find, find any trace of a connection between the press of Rattled in Venice and that of Zeiner in Augsburg. Curiously, Zeiner was also one of the first of German printers to use woodcut, or more prob probably metal initial letters, but here again, we can discover no resemblance between his designs and those of Rattled. So Rattled reappears in Venice in 1476, where he carry out, carried out his business for a decade, publishing a total of about 70 editions. In the first two years, he was associated with two other printers of German origin, Bernard Mahler, called Victor, his fellow citizen, and the Bavarian Peter Löslein from Le Langenzen, the company which uh, signs a dozen editions. After the printing workshop was opened in Venice, the first book printed by Rattled in 1476 was the most famous work by Regio Montanus himself, the Calendarium. It's a very technical reference and book with text 
numerical tablets and xylographical diagrams about the moon, for example, in double colors. You can see one example here in the big of the, 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 the beginning of the slide. Like in the Nuremberg original edition printed by Regio Montanus in 1474, two volvelle are inserted in the book. But it is evident that change from a very simple and functional system uh, at the left um, to a new solution uh, aesthetically engaging. A Volvel or wheel chart is a paper machine uh, with a rotating part produced to accommodate the organization and calculation in the astronomical world. The edition is mostly amazing because here the first new title page in a printed book appears. An idea that Rato like a lot if he uses it not only in the Latin edition, more times reprinted in different forms, but also in the Italian edition printed in the same year of the Latin Princeps. And for the German edition, two years later, you can see here the three title page with the same frame and the same layout of the page. The layout of the page is very different from what we call a title page. Let's observe carefully the graphic strokes on the paper. We will take as an example the Italian version. The published poem, the text printed, is a sonetto caudato, a regular sonnet with a tale of three verses was normal in this period, this, this metrical form. Here we can see the decoration, a frame uh, with a white background and the use of the red colors. But we have the title too. Calendario. The author's name, Ioanne de Monte Regio, Regio Montanus. An abstract of the text, qui numero aureo e tutti i segni, etc. The indication of the price, pochi penese. The date and the place, Venezis. 1476. The name of printers in red. The first society between Rattle, Mahler, and Sloss Line. It's a little strange, strange for us, but it is a title page. The first title page. <laughs> After the dissolution of the company with Mahler and Löslein, Rattle continued to work on his own as a publisher and printer. The production of liturgical books, such as bre breviaries, which becomes one of its characteristic features, demonstrates the technical expertise reached by Rattle in printing, in particular in red and black, but not only. In fact, Rattold was the first printer to employ several colored inks simultaneously, 
if we exclude the doubtful versal letters of the 1457 Psalterium of Fust and Schoeffer in Mainz. I would like to focus in particular on two cases. First is the breviarium for the Benedictine congregation of Saint Justina, Santa Justina in Padua. You can see the bibliographic record in ISTC of the edition of the Editio Princeps printed by Rattel on April 1st, 1480, and of the second edition printed again by Rattel three years later in 1483. The first one is an edition partially printed on parchment in distinct sections, perhaps also linked separately. Therefore, many of the surviving copies are imperfect. Apart from the technical specificities, the work demonstrates Rattle's contacts with an ins institutional client, which turned to him to disseminate a liturgical text that was to lead to the standardization of the liturgy within the congregation. Three years later, Rattle himself produced another edition, this time using Andrea Torresani's typography, in which we can recognize some initials and a series of Gothic characters. This edition, divided into four sections, was also printed partially on parchment and certifies Rattle's collaboration with the printer who, in a few years, will become one of the most important of Venice. Also on this occasion, as in the manuscript, Rattle never misses an opportunity to underline the textual correctness due to Thomasius Monacus, in, uh, here in, uh, in red, but also the typographical care, summa cura ac diligentia maxima imprimendum curavit, in the colophon. The breviary then had the numerous other editions, some signed by Torresani himself. Another important institutional collaboration of Rattled for the production of liturgical books is that with the Church of Hungary. First with the printing of the rare Breviarium Strigoniense, sponsored by the King of Hungary himself, Matthias Corvinus, and finished on November 12, 1480, at the expense of the Regensburg bookseller and publisher, Johannes Cassis. This work demonstrates Rattle's European fame in the printing of litur liturgical books, so much so that despite Matthias having set up a printing house in Buda, he resorted to Venice to print the breviary. Relations with the Hungarian church reappeared a few years later when Rattled printed with the same style of the breviarium, the Missale Strigoniense, finished in March 1486. This is the last edition before leaving Venice. It's evident that Rattle's interest for the graphic form is not unoccasional. Instead, it's a part of his printed project. His editions, especially those in quarto and in folio formats, are often decorated with important elements. We have seen the frame on white background in the first calendarium or 1476, but Rattle is especially famous for the decoration of a black background that he uses with good test, also printing them in red ink or combining colors here from calendarium of 1472.
Rathold uses a large collection of capitals on a black background with a very elegant decoration in white, small flowers, elongated leaves, symmetrical designs. He, somet he sometimes prints capitals in red. Sometimes the same are decorated with watercolor. The background is so uniform and compact that it's not easy to understand if the matrix is a xylographic block or a metal cut, a relief print marking technique, technique real, realized by metal plate. But it's clear that the masterpiece of Rato's book decoration are the frame on a black background with twisted branches, oak leaves, acorns, a combination of the German test with the beauty of the Italian Renaissance. One of the most well-known cases concerns the editions of Werner Rollevings Fasciculus Temporum of 24 November 1480 and, uh, and 28 May 1484. These editions are very important, even if not original. In fact, they reproduce a model used in previous editions. However, they demonstrate the great technical skill reached by Rattled, who proposes a very elegant, but at the same time complex mise en page, which must have had a very structured typography exemplar behind it. In particular, Rattled edition takes up the one made the previous year, also in Venice, by a little known German typographer, Georg Walk, uh, with whom Rattled perhaps collaborated. The subject requires a more in-depth investigation, but it is possible that Walk is, uh, was a publisher who turned to Rattled to print his uh, few editions. In any case, it should be noted that the apparatus of uh, illustration is due to the engraver himself. Uh, sorry, to the same engraver, to the same engraver. I focus just on the representation of Venice in a Rattles 1480 edition that more faithfully reproduced the city of which Palazzo Ducale, two columns, and the square and several gondolas are clearly recogn recognizable. You can see in this uh, uh, particular enlarged. Rattles uh, 1483 edition in par is partially different. It features a dedication to the Venetian patrician Niccolò Mocenigo, reproduced in this slide but also a different mise en page with introductory texts on two columns and some original illustration um, that you can see in the third image on the, on the right. Rattle's masterpiece of illustrated book is undoubtedly the edition of the Poetica Astronomica by Iginus, of which I cannot speak here. With no doubt, it is one of the most beautiful printed books before the Aldus Manutius Hypnerotomachia Polyphili of 1499. I will only say that we find part of the illustration in other Venetian, Venetian editions of the late 15th century, including in Aldus himself.
However, the most important book printed by Rattle in Venice is the Editio Princeps of the Elementa Geometriae by Euclide, 1482, the great geometry scholar of the Greek world. This Latin translation, old of three centuries and half, and based, based on the Arabic version of the text, is printed here for the first time. Completed, this is very important, with the diagrams necessary for understanding the test. You can see the first page with this frame. Uh, if you return to the, to the, with the frame that is not complete, only three part with a very nice P, the title in red and a part of these diagrams. The next please. In the dedicatory letter to Giovanni Mocenigo, at this time Doge of Venice, Rattle underlines that the diagrams are indispensable to understand the text. Indeed, he tells about schemata geometrica, quibus mathematica volumina scatent, ac sine quibus nil in his discipline sphere intellegi optime potes, the diagrams from which mathematics books spring, and without which almost nothing can be understood well in this discipline. You can see the perfection of these diagrams. This is a technical problem. For these scholars are uh, okay, perfect. For these scholars have investigated the, tec the technique used to print these figures that look so different from the woodcut. Someone, but it's not a shared opinion, think that he uh, rattle was able to print geometrical figures by banding metal strips and setting them in plaster of leaves, like some cookie cutters in short. What is certain, however, is that one, Regio Montanus already used a very similar technique in his Disputaciones, printed in Nuremberg about, about 1475. Among the privilege, the concession of protection for this who patented a new technique or invasion in, in Venice, there is no request from part of Rattle. Still in the Euclides, we can see the application of another important new technique never seen before, the possibility to print in gold. Before this date, we knew about the use of ochre ink, dark yellow, to simulate in print the handwriting in gold. The, fir the first choir in Euclides edition was printed two times in different composition and in seven copies, about 300 are known today, a lot, a lot of copies are, are preserved. Uh, we um, find the, dedicato the de dedicatory letter printed in gold. The British Library copy is a dedication copy to the Doge with the illuminated coat of arms. You can see evidently that is true gold. It's not a color.
at an, an unspecified moment between April and December 1486, Rathod returned to Augsburg, invited for his fame to work as official printer by the Prince Bishop Jan von Werdenberg, then confirmed by his successor, Friedrich von Zollern. The information is provided by the humanist Adolf Ocko in the prefatory letter to the first edition plainly printed by Rattel in his hometown. The obsequiale Augustense dated February 1st, 1487 and commissioned by von Zollern himself. The bishop's invitation committed Rattel to devote himself to printing religious works for the diocese. But the printer also continued to publish the mathematical astronomical text that had characterized his Venetian period. Shortly before leaving Venice, on April 1st, 1486, only a month after his last Venetian date, and while his tram transfer to Augsburg was already planned, Rattled had published what is probably the first sample of typefaces in history. It is a flying sheet bearing the specifications of all the series with which he could print and which was made for promotional purposes toward his new German clients. There are 10 Gothic types different in shape and body, three Romans and one Greek. The index characterum is preserved in a single copy today at the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek in Munich and was discovered about 1884 in the binding of an old book in Munich. It, it is not, a, it is not a, like the, the the Bodoni manual, but is something like that. So uh, <laughs> a type, uh, the first typeface is uh, that we know. The modernity of Rattle's working became, became, uh, became evident in a very interesting list of printed books that he published during the last years of his presence in Venice. It's a single sheet, broad, broad sheet, with the catalog of his production available at this moment. This gives us the possibility to date the sheet about 1484. The title, printed in red, is Libri Venales Venetis Impressi, books on sale printed in Venice. You can see that there are small title, very short title, and a, a division in subject. The survival of a, sing a single flying sheet and especially of book catalogs, which soon lost their relevance, is quite exceptional. In this case, the addition, in addition to the copy of Munich studied by Redgrave and very defective here reproduced in this slide, we have seen in the previous slide <laughs> that of Leipzig discovered by Conrad Burger in 1895 and studied by him in a famous book about this genre of, uh, of material uh, in 1907. If the list was printed by Rattel, and we are sure about it because we can recognize his typeset, 
not all the books are printed by him and not all the book printed by him are listed. The list is a catalog of the books available in a bookshop or available in the international trade. There are no books in Italian language, only Latin. The classification by subject is interesting. Theology, philosophy, classics, law, medicine, in addition, also the category that Rattle considered his specialty appears, astronomy and geometry. In Augsburg, Rattle continued his business publishing about 160 editions in the 15th century and another 50 in the 16th century a sign of the gradual reduction in work. He appears to have set to work at once upon the missals, breviaries, and clerical books of the diocese, which issued from his press during the next 20 years in rare profusion. The last news of Rattle's life is from November 1527, a certain Peter Kempter paid Rattle a debt of 15 ducats. Rattle had already died in uh, <clears throat> 1528 when his widow and son Jörg took over from him in the tax register of the city of Augsburg. Jörg himself continued his father's business for some years but without the same fame. When we think of the modern book, the reference immediately goes to Aldus Manusius. Rattle, however, always in Venice, but over 10 years before the arrival of Aldus, already introduced some innovations, which Althaut, not yet fully de developed, laid the foundation for the birth of the real modern book. We have seen title page, the first title page, perfect and the complex integration uh, with text and images, multicolor printing, large assortment of fonts, and so on. In a decade of activity in Venice, Rattle has been able to innovate the book production. The arrival of many other printers in Venice between uh, 70s and 80s, then convinced him to leave Italy to lead a less innovative but more profitable business. However, his contribution to making Venice the book of capital, the book capital of the Renaissance is certain. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor and Professor. There were a few questions. Uh, Dina asks, how were uh, books designed before there was a title page? The, as, uh, the history of the title page is very complicated. Uh, there is a famous uh, um, book by, um, by uh, Smith, I don't remember the name of this uh, woman uh, of the British Library. That is a, a small uh, uh, um, one, 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 um, one handbook about about the, this this topic. Um, the beginning is only a small title on the first page, uh, is the name of the book, not the title completed, only the name of the book. But after um, there is a develop, the development. And is one history. It's, it's strange that Rattle think about one strange page like this that uh, have elements that uh, uh, after we know in the modern book, someone write what I see color decoration. It's like one modern book. Yeah, it's, this is the problem. Uh, how he can think about it. But after he do this big example and after stop, and that is, is one experiment perhaps. Thank you very much. Um, 
Sandra asked, did the church at this time have to approve the printing? Yeah, this is sure. Uh, Gutenberg printed a, a Bible for the for the monks uh, for the church uh, in Germany, and not for <laughs> for uh, other person. The church for uh, for forty years is completely very happy about the the the, the printing. We know this uh, in 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 uh, in Schweinem uh, Epanat's uh, um, book uh, printed in Rome. Uh, Giovanni Andrea Bussi writes that the Cardinal Niccolò uh, da Cusa for, for Cusanus uh, says the printing art one sancta ars, uh, one all, only art. And, uh, it, and he says say that uh, we are very happy that uh, the, the, the printing art came in the, in, the, in the capital of the church. <laughs> And um, there are no problem for a lot of year. After there are problem, but in the first forty years, I think that the church is a, is a protagonist of this uh, of this uh, adventure, more or less. It's not exactly, but. Eduardo, is also about about the title page. Yeah. Uh, also, also the the books uh, of um, Aldus Manutius. Uh, um, it's difficult to to define uh, the the title page, the the first page of the books because um, normally Aldus uh, uh, put just the 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 title or or the name of author and. Uh, um, little information about about the book but not uh, a, a true title page uh, um, as uh, you you as you, as you uh, speak about uh, um, with the rat on the Reggio Montano so it's a it's a it's an history very <laughs> complicated to, to, yeah. to see. you you think you think the, the edition of uh, Dante Alighieri Commedia that in the title page there is only Le terze rime di Dante, all this printed in the same type of the text, not in a special type, the same. And there are not so interested in this. It also, rattle, rattle, uh, not, not always uh, put a front uh, a title page like that of Reggio Montano in uh, in uh, his career eh? is uh, an, an exception for <laughs> but uh, but is an exceptional uh, exception yeah thank you very much um, Dwight asked you mentioned some skepticism about the cookie cutters as the model for the geometric designs your thoughts on other options uh, for what he did the problem is, uh, uh, if you reproduce this diagram on the paper, and after you copy it on a, a wood uh, block, and after you cut it, the design is different because the line is uh, not perfect. Uh, the spessore, the, um, I don't know. The line is is uh, sometimes small, sometimes it's big, and when there are the contact with the line you have a continuity. Here is different. It's like some small uh, part of metal that they, they, they touch one another, but it's not the same. And the, the idea is that you use some metal uh, uh, and after you block them and print with them. It's different, it's difficult to, to, to understand. Enzo Baldasso write two articles about this this possibility, and uh, it's interesting because if you see uh, the other part of the page, you see evidently this very strong impression. Thank you very much. Uh, Sandra also asked uh, regarding the calendarium from 1482, what kind of paper was used? I don't know, I don't know it. And also she asked, um, were drop caps copied from Bibles to start paragraphs on or page? Sorry, I don't, I don't understand. Luca, tu hai capito? No. Drop Sorry, cap I don't understand. Drop caps, I believe it's uh, indented or something. 
something to that effect. Well, we'll ask her when uh, we open microphones. Um, another question is from Alex. Did Ratold print anything in Hebrew? No, I don't uh, know. No, no, no. You don't have the, the character, you don't use it. Also, also, the Greek is used just for a small part of text, not, uh, not in every... For citation, but, but not for citation, to print but on. not for, a, for a entire book, entire text in, in, in Greek. So I, I think he, he don't speak Greek and, uh, and certain <laughs> he, don't speak, he didn't speak Hebrew. So. <laughs> Sarah, right? The, 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 the cups are very big. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> but is is um, he want is is not a, 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 a to begin. It's one celebration of the begin. It's very big letter, and it's very very nice. Capo lettera in Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um... Claire asked, am I correct that each color is a separate run through the press? Uh, he printed in black and in red, evidently. When you have other color, uh, like in, in, in this image uh, with, uh, with the, the moon, uh, it's, it's difficult to understand. If he printed the, um, the, the block, with color or are colored after. Uh, perhaps it was colored after uh, very well, but it's, it's not uh, printed in color. You think that the printed in different color from, from red uh, is a technical, um, very difficult and no normal, but it was able to print in gold. Uh, this is a contradiction. <laughs> Thank you, sometimes, you. sometimes uh, print uh, um, some parts, uh, some illustration, uh, not with the text, but in in, in the second moment. So uh, he could color the the the, um, the, 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 the xilographic uh, block after print uh, after printed edition. So. Um, but we, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Um, uh, Daniel asked, um, the figure of Palazzo Ducal was printed after the fire of the Palazzo in 1483? <sighs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I think no. I think no. But I'm not not sure. Um, I think the figure is uh, is um, is um, is early er, earlier um, because uh, the, the 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 same the same uh, figure is not uh, exactly the same, but <laughs> a, figure, a similar figure. Um, appears in the in the previous editions and the edition of the image of rattle uh, reproduced uh, with with uh, a bit of changes but not uh, great changes the 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 images precedent so i think i think that uh, is um, is previous of of the of the fire of 1483 Thank you very, very much. I will open microphones for everyone to say uh, thank you and for those who have further comments or questions uh, to do it personally. I thank you both very, very much uh, and uh, hope to see you very soon. Laila Tov from Jerusalem. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. See you in Jerusalem. <laughs> as yeah. soon as possible. <laughs> in, uh, in, in October. In October. <laughs> October. Okay.
Vai, vai. Grazie. Vai, Grazie vai, mille. Vai, vai. <ride> Grazie, signori. Arrivederci. Thank you. Thank you all for being here, Laila Tov. Thank you, thank you.